Hey, what's up, people? How you guys doing, man? It's Renal Calix. I am officially back with another video. So, yes, in my video. So, hope you guys enjoy it. So, the night did kick off with the uh, Riso Show match. Bros Clay versus David Otunga. I didn't see that match. And it turned out Bros Clay won, which I thought indeed David Otunga won. And only $2.08 an issue. That's a hot price. Sorry. And then we see uh, World Heavyweight Championship, an opening night, which I didn't expect to be an opening. Sheamus versus Dolph Ziggler. And um, apparently um, Sheamus and Ziggler put on an amazing match. Well, not really an amazing match, but Ziggler actually did pretty well on it. I thought, um, you know, Dolph Ziggler looked great in the ring, but to see him overshadowing Jack Swagger, it's like, why is Jack Swagger basically turning into a jobber? Maybe that's how he's been booked lately, but he was a World Heavyweight Champion for four months. Dolph Ziggler's been World Heavyweight Championship for four minutes. Dolph Ziggler's never getting a shot at the title. Like, I mean, he's never getting a... T um, he's never going to be World Heavyweight Championship except that time Edge was fired and he got crowned. So, practically, to be honest, I have to say... um. Dolph Ziggler needs to stay at Mick Carter and see if he's going to be officially ready. But he needs to change his gimmick. Like, he needs to look more serious. They try to make him look more a serious competitor, but it didn't work. So, I like the Dolph Ziggler now, like, with his hair grown out. And they try to give him a haircut and stuff in his new look. It's like, it was useless. So, that's why now he's just, you know, glad he, like, he's back to his old self, so... But he looks more like a mid card. But if he could become more serious where he doesn't become an epic fail, I think he has a shot at being a serious main eventer. But now he doesn't look like a serious main eventer. He looks like a main card. Alright. But Sheamus, you know, he's a serious main eventer from the start. When he became on Raw and dominated Jamie Noel. When he was a heel, he looked like a potential main eventer. And that's what happened indeed. And he was... He's now a two-time WWE Champion and now a World Champion. So, after winning a WrestleMania match in 18 seconds, he's been making history. So, he's on an incredible run. Tuxedo match, uh, I don't take that match very seriously. I thought it was just silly. Ricardo Rodriguez did get a good upper hand. I'm surprised he got some offense going. But, I thought Santino would dominate the match. I thought the match was stupid. Why is Ricardo Rodriguez competing in matches? And it's ironic because they, the, they used to have, like, the bra and panties matches. But I was, like, 13 at the time. So whenever they had that, because they used to have that, and here comes the pain. But, like, whenever we try to play, they'd be like, no, don't play. Will was like, yeah, because it's, like, not appropriate. But for the most part, they had a tuxedo match where they, like, it was funny. But it was useless. But Santino won. But Ricardo, Alberto's are real the next night got payback. And Ricardo Rodriguez did get payback after Roberto beat at him, but Santino needs to get in a few with someone like Damian Sandow. It will be more worth it, and he can see how ignoramus this feud is, because it is. It's like completely, epically just comedy right there. It's not very serious, and I don't think Santino's a guy not to be taken seriously. So that's what I have to say. All right, another title match: uh, Christian against Cody Rhodes. Christian and Cody Rhodes put off a great match. I thought it was awesome. I thought it looked more like... I, I thought this is something worth watching. And I know it's going to be a long match. But they actually did work together. And um, they actually made it look really believable. Like, oh my gosh. They made it look believable. On top of it, they really took a lot... Took, Christian took serious bumps and bruises. Like, that's a serious competitor right there. If you're willing to take bumps and bruises and not be afraid of pain which I'm trying to overcome, and overcome, that's the fear I'm trying to overcome, then you'll be a serious competitor, and you get so much respect for that. So that's what I have to say for that, which was amazing. The Fatal 4-Way uh, match to be number one contender for Tag Team Champions. Uh, I kind of think um, AW should be with the prime top players. They look like a perfect fit. So that's what I, that's what did happen. So, um... Primetime players, Darren Young and Titus O'Neil pulled the victory, and I thought uh, the match looked a little bit rushed, but it's, from what I heard on PWTR, Pro Wrestling Talk Radio, I don't know if those who watch, they said, oh, like, you know, they're trying to prove that, oh, we have a tag team division, that's what they were trying to show to the fans, but, um, I think the purpose, uh, 
it's an ironic betrayal because AW was already a heel with Primo and Epico and Rosa Mendez. But then the, the they flipped the switch and then he betrayed Primo and Epico and sided with the primetime players, which I think is a perfect fit. So what I think they did here is like they try to undo the damage or undo their own personal damage where they shouldn't be with the Hispanics, where he should be with the the black guys, like primetime players. Um, Darren Young and Titus O'Neil. So, from what I think it happened there is that, yeah, that's what they basically did. I think they, they just try to undo the damage by putting them with primetime players, but then they, like, put, to try and get rid of frosting, then put new frosting on it with another frosting, and that's what they basically did. It's like they try to get rid of the frosting on the cake and then, um, uh, put, um, new frosting on it and that's what they do with the aw with the primetime players and then instead they like to put a feud into it so they add sprinkles and that's what they did they put a feud with the primo and epico so i wonder how long the feud's gonna last but primo and epico did get a victory with the, uh, with the count out that monday night on raw and then they got paid back by assaulting them backstage on smackdown they assaulted aw and the primetime players apparently so that's why i think they went from there all right Next match we had was Layla versus Beth Phoenix. Okay. Something to talk about there. Um, Layla and Beth Phoenix, I think they did have some unnecessary stuff from what PWT, from what I heard on there. But I think the Layla thing with her wearing the crown, like with uh, Beth Phoenix, and, with wearing Beth Phoenix the crown, doing the taunting and the silly dancing, uh, I think... Um, she did the same thing with The Rock, except The Rock was able to, at the same time, probably look serious when he wore the Hurricane crown. I mean, when we heard that, we wore that Hurricane cape when he had his match against the Hurricane. He taunted him, but at the same time, he was able to compete. Um, Layla, they tried to do the same thing with Layla, personally, from what I think. And then she wore the crown, and then she tried to compete with the crown, taunting her at the same time, and putting on her moves and stuff. And I still think it was great, but I think it's like... With Beth Phoenix trying to assault her, it looked cliche because she she just gets angry and tries to assault, and then it backfires, and then she ends up getting beat. That's what I think they did there, and I think um, from what happened is it's like they did put on a good match at Over the Limit, which was okay, but I think um, what they did is they put pizza. It's like the pizza is fine without any sauce or anything or toppings. And then it's like, you try to put barbecue sauce on the pizza, and it's like, oh, it's supposed to taste good. That's what I think they did there with the Layla dancing and stuff, but they still managed to, like, eventually put, put make it more seriously at the end, which I think was, it was like, kind of like, kind of like, still looked like it was a lack of effort, but I think it was interesting. Layla, you know... As a champion on her own, like, without having, riding Michelle McCool's cocktail, she is really, like, putting in an effort. Like, I really appreciate her effort, and she is looking great in the ring. And apparently, um, uh, apparently she, you know, I didn't, I think they did that too soon, like, for Layla to wear the crown and stuff. And she acted kind of, like, heelish, if you come to think of it, but at the same time, she was entertaining, but... That was kind of unneeded, and they tried to do the same thing. The Rock did the same thing, but he somehow was entertaining and can uh, really put on a good match and compete and look serious at the same time. He did the same thing with Stone Cold, but they tried that with Layla, and it was okay, from my opinion. But, yeah, that's what happened from there. Layla picks up the win, and practically, hopefully, Layla still wears the title and see if they can, she can have another feud with another diva. So, hopefully so, we have another feud with maybe Natalia, Maxine, or maybe um, Eve if she returns. And I want to see her do executive administrating both her and being in the ring at the same time. She needs to get back to being a competitor. Sinkara versus Hunico. Sinkara, I think, gets the win. Interesting match, but Hunico got too much offense, but Sinkara still managed to put like five moves and gets the win. The triple threat match, the triple threat match, it was a long match, but it was interesting. I thought Daniel Bryan was going to somehow get the win, 
but I was relieved because CM Punk gets the win because Daniel Bryan would just go off so much of how AJ's a distraction and for him to capture the WWE Championship and for him to back it up, it would be completely cliche. It's like, thank goodness CM Punk wins. So, I don't know what's going to be next from after Friday night when AJ was the guest timekeeper and it looked like she kind of screwed Daniel Bryan, but let's see how it goes from there. So... CM Punk gets to win. Amazing match. That's the main event right there. And But, yeah. So that's where it goes from there. CM Punk gets the win. And AJ comes and interferes. And that helps CM Punk get the win, basically. Ryback squashed two jobbers. Not much from there. I think that was an okay match. But, you know, Ryback did his thing. So that's what happens from there. Steel Cage match. Big Show loses, John Laurinaitis gets fired, but Big Show wins, John Cena gets fired. So, I thought it was going to be a draw. I was hoping it was a draw. It turned out John Cena gets the clean win. I don't believe that. John Laurinaitis gets fired. You know, um, I kind of, like, I love him and hate him as general manager, but at the same time, I think he, he actually plays a good role as a general manager. And as an executive vice president of talent relations, and for him to, like, step into the scene when last year, was last year, July, when um, he was the, basically, the assistant for Vince McMahon, who tries, because he manages the talent, and he tries to get CM Punk to get a new contract, it backfired, and then, then he began writing Triple H's cocktail after Vince McMahon gets relieved from his duties, and then... He becomes the general manager after the walkout, a week after that walkout incident, and then that, that got people back in. And then he was on this incredible run as interim general manager, then becoming the general manager of both Raw and SmackDown. I think he was on a good run. Getting David Otunga and Eve as his assistants, Eve as the executive administrator, David Otunga's legal counsel, but now David Otunga did both legal counsel and he competed in the ring. And for Eve, I think Eve's like doing too much as the executive administrator. And then she was in charge for a couple SmackDowns where she was like fully in charge after John and I took some nights off, which was kind of ironic. And then Eve's like good friends with Vicky, even though she had a, I think she did have a feud with Vicky. And then ironically, they became friends just because Eve makes a heel turn and, you know, she's in charge. So. That's what basically happened. Teddy Long was in charge one night, so that's what I think happened from there. Yeah, Teddy Long was in charge one night. Then Mick Foley wasn't even in the office. He was, like, in s random places for segments. But anyway, you know, John Long Ice is fired, but I don't know what's going to be next. Now David Otunga is now an in-ring competitor, and I don't know if we, what's going to be next for him as the legal counsel. Um... You know, it's going to be a lot of questions of what's going to be next because Eve did a uh, trial for a show and she's in it with Terry Crews, Nick Lachey, and other people. I don't remember. But so far, um, John Lauren Ice gets fired. The next night, we have a week of interim general managers. And now Vicky's going to be in charge. I wonder what's going to be next from there. But Jossia beat the big show. So let's see what's next for Big Show, he may have a few with Brodus Clay, I think that's what we need to see, but David, he's tied up with David Otunga, but David Otunga needs to, like, go for the United States champion, it's time for him to get back in the title hunt, like, um, if I was Jennifer Hudson, or if I was David Otunga, I could use those politics, Jennifer Hudson's a celebrity, and she could be using, he could be using his politics to get in title scenes and stuff, like, because uh, she's a celebrity, and she's a talented singer who's on American Idol, Dream Girls, and yeah, I'll be like part of those big politics and for her to get in the scene like Michelle McCool was with Undertaker and many people say oh it's because of Undertaker and you know it'll be the same thing with David Otunga and like he shouldn't be a jobber he should be like feuding with Santino he should be Santino become the United States champion that's what I'm thinking they should go from there and then things will be so refreshing with um Santino in the scene so that's where you need to go from there. So that's for the most part. So, um, yo, Big Johnny gets fired. Hopefully, he's still vice president of talent relations in real life, and he should be still in his office. But, um, who's gonna be new general manager? Well, we never know, but we'll see what happens. But 
So far, we have Mick Foley, then it's going to be Vicky, and then I wonder what's going to happen a week after that. We don't know what's next, but, yeah, let's, let's see where it goes from there. So, that's my No Worry Out review. I give it an 8 out of 10. I thought it was a, a, a good pay-per-view, even though it had some unnecessary matches, but, you know, they just need time filler for the most part, so... That's where I think they need to go from there for the least of it. So that's my video, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.